Welcome to the R video tutorial on ARIMA in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to do basic ARIMA in R. Let's get started. So the data set that I'm going to use is Australian beer data, and it's actually seasonal data, and it can be found at the following URL listed at the top here. The second thing I'm going to do is, once I have this data, is I am going to read it in. All right, now that I've read it in, I'm going to plot it just to see what it looks like. Now one thing I can notice from this data is that you can really see the seasonal pattern. You can see that it seems to oscillate with spikes and valleys uh, throughout and it also seems to have some sort of trend for part of the time and then it levels out and then it declines so it has some sort of profile to it. And we're going to want a model that tries to adapt to this. Uh, but one thing that you'll notice is that this data set is probably not stationary. If you don't know what stationary is, then you should ask your statistics teacher or read it up in, in a book. All right, so let's look at the ACF and the PACF, uh, the autocorrelation function or partial autocorrelation function. Okay, so based on this picture, we can see the ACF does not tail off quickly. Hence, it's not stationary, so we need to do some differencing to get it to become stationary. All right, in R, what you would want to use is the DIFF function. Now, the DIFF function takes pair, each observation and differences it from the one previous to it. Now, notice I didn't talk a lot about the ACF and the PACF because those are covered in a different video tutorial on graphing. But here we want to difference it, and we need the length of the differencing. And we want to see what this looks like when we plot it. Okay, notice that the plot no longer has a trend to it. However, you can still see these oscillating spikes. And actually, the oscillating spikes keep getting larger and larger and larger as we move from left to right, which lets you leads you to believe there's probably heteroscedasticity on here or non-constant variance. I'm not going to show you how to deal with that in this video tutorial. I'm just trying to get you associated with ARIMA. But here you'd probably want to take the log or do something else to help correct for the non-constant variance. Okay, so let's look at the ACF and the PACF for the difference data. This has a single difference. Okay, based on this, you can see that the ACF tails off quickly. Uh, there are regular spikes at every 12th period, which corresponds to this being monthly data. So each 12th period is correlated with the previous 12th period. So annually there's a, a, a periodicity to it. And it looks like there might be one at six months, but I'm going to ignore the one at six months at the moment focusing more on the one at 12, which also leads me to believe that I'm going to need to put in a seasonal component. So I'm going to put this into my model, and I'll talk to you how to put that in, uh, or you can leave it out if you wish. All right, so here's really what you want to know. You want to know, how do I fit this ARIMA model? Well, once I've figured out sort of the configuration of it, I can begin to fit ARIMA models, and fitting ARIMA models is a little bit of an art to it in order to be able to select the correct model. There are algorithms that will try to find the best model for you, but here I'm just going to show you how to find a single model. All right, so the first thing you're going to use is the statement ARIMA. The second thing you're going to do is put in the time series that you're interested in. So I'm interested in beer one. I'm really not interested in the differenced one because ARIMA will difference it for me. The next statement that you'll see right under this is order. Now order is the standard ARIMA PDQ. P is the order on the AR. D is the number of differences. And Q is the number of or the order of the MA term in the ARIMA model. Now here I have an ARIMA one one zero so it's going to difference it once and put an ar1 correlation structure in there and i also have right below that a seasonal statement and this adds a seasonal component to the data now 
or the model. Now your data may not have a seasonal component, so this is not always needed. You probably don't need this if you're not dealing with seasonal data. So here you have seasonal equals, and here I'm going to use a list statement. Here I have to put in the order, and I also have to put in the period. So the period in this, because I noticed for my seasonal component, the period was 12 months, or every 12th observation. And here I'm going to difference it by 12, and I'm also going to put in an AR1 portion on the every 12th period. And this will combine, creates my model that is a seasonal ARIMA model. Below that I have a statement here that says include mean false. Now R will automatically try to put a mean into this, which will force any sort of trend that is local to continue on as if it were in the past. And it automatically defaults to true. So I want to turn this off because I don't believe that there's any sort of systematic trend upward or downward that I want to put in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to run this. And I've typed here beer1.fit just so I can see what the output looks like. Okay, so over here on the output, all this is going to give me are the coefficients for the AR term and the seasonal AR term, as well as their standard errors. And if you notice, their standard errors are quite small compared to the coefficient, so they're probably statistically significant. We're not going to get into how to come up with that here, but you can ask your statistics teacher or look it up in a book or ask a question about it. Uh, and it gives you log likelihood information. It also gives you AIC, which is incredibly useful for model selection. And I'll probably do a video on how to use AIC and BIC for model selection later. Uh, so this gives me the actual coefficients in my model. Now, I didn't write out the model because that would be too difficult here. But here, these are my coefficients. Now, the next thing you may wish to do is actually generate some predictions. So here... I'm going to use my fitted model that I've already fit, and I'm going to use predict statement to predict this model 12 periods ahead. So you see here, predict beer1.fit is my fitted ARIMA model. The next statement is n.ahead equals 12. So this says predict out into the future 12 periods ahead. My next statement below that is a plot, because I don't really want to see the predictions. I actually want to plot them at the moment. So here I say plot beer 1, my original data. And here I've changed the limits on it. So I have type equals L, which will make it a line picture. The limits I've changed from 400 to 488 so that I don't have to see all of the history and the predictions. And I've changed my Y scale so that my predictions look good. Next statement, lines, beer1.pred, dollar sign, pred, color equals blue, is going to give me the mean of my predictions into the future. And I've also added prediction bounds. And prediction bounds are incredibly important in statistics because it expresses how uncertain where the value may fall is. So here I actually have a statement, lines, beer1.pred, dollar sign, pred, plus... 2 times beer 1 dot pred dollar sign SE, which is the standard error. And I'm going to color these in red. And I also have the statement below it that is minus. Now this 2 is pretty close to 1.96, so I'm using it as a rule of thumb to get this interval. But what I want to do is I want to see what this looks like when I plot it so I can see how well the model fits or predicts. Okay, so here we have a picture of our predictions. Notice that the blue line is the actual predictions. The red lines are the prediction bounds. This is where I think, uh, with uncertainty, the predictions will fall in. My future values are going to fall. And notice that in the blue portion, it does look like it's mimicking what's occurring in the previous time periods, 12 periods back. It's not exactly because it's a blend of the ones previous. Also notice that my prediction bounds also have this sort of zigzag in it, reflecting that seasonality shape. Now, this has just been a general introduction to ARIMA and R. 
There's so much to learn for ARIMA and time series modeling. I hope you would take a class on it or get a book and or start reading about it. But this should get you started on being able to be functional in R on using uh, R for ARIMA modeling. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on ARIMA and R. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.